Hi, welcome to a very quick introduction to solar energy resources which forms part of Unit 3 Natural Resources in your Environmental Science and Engineering course. As always, you must refer to one of the recommended textbooks for a more complete study. Let's start. Solar energy is so much in the news these days due to its rapidly emerging role as an abundant and sustainable energy source that can significantly reduce and even remove your dependence on conventional fuel sources such as fossil fuels. But the story of the sun is much, much older. Since the time of man, the sun was one of the most powerful elemental forces known and was worshipped as a god in almost all of human civilizations. There is a reason for this worship. The sun's energy gives life to agriculture and influences the seasons. We even learned to tell time using the sundials which forecasted time based on the shadows the sun created. The sun's energy was soon utilized for drying clothes, preservation of food resources and the innovations have progressed onwards to this day. Let's fast forward to now. Now we know that the sun is the closest star to the planet at over 149 billion kilometers. It is the light from this sun that sustains all life on earth and remains the primary source of energy. The most incredible thing in this is that only 47% of the total energy that hits the earth actually makes it to the surface. We now know that there is a solar constant with which we can measure the amount of energy falling every square meter on the earth. And we also know that sunlight is in fact a mixture of a variety of inner different energies, each associated with different wavelengths, radio, infrared, ultraviolet and so on, each with its characteristic properties that translates to the harnessing by humans for specific applications. However, sunlight, though abundant, is not available at all places in the same quantity. The amount of radiation or its intensity can be mapped on the global map to use in harvesting the maximum solar energy for conversion to useful work. This phenomenon is also known as solar insulation. How do we know all this? Well, there is an instrument known as the paranometer that can measure the intensity of solar radiation. Now, there are two forms of energy that we have been harnessing from the sun. They are the sun's heat and its light. Let us first look at heat energy. Putting things in the simplest perspective, a child focusing the sun's rays using a magnifying glass to burn something up is the best example to illustrate the utilization of the sun's heat energy to do work. In more real world applications, the most well known forms of appliances using solar heat principles are the solar water heater and the solar cooker. In the case of solar water heater, Water is allowed to flow through evacuated tubes containing coatings which absorb the sun's solar heat energy, thus transferring the energy into the water, heating it up. In the case of solar cooker, food is placed in a container placed in a precise location on a solar collector or mirror which focuses the sun's heat energy, thus heating or cooking the food inside the container. These are some of the earliest known solar appliances that are still popular today. But we have also moved on to bigger applications that harness the sun's massive heat energy. One of the most well-known and revolutionary applications of solar heat energy in India can be seen at the holy temple of Shirdi Sai Baba in Shirdi, Maharashtra, whose free food distribution center caters to many thousands of pilgrims every single day by utilizing the power of the sun. Solar heat energy is captured by a series of giant movable parabolic mirrors that concentrate the sun's energy onto heat exchangers or receivers that transfer this enormous heat into evacuated tubes filled with water. The water gets heated to become steam which is then sent at high pressure via pipelines for cooking purposes. The temple thus uses the sun's abundant heat energy to fulfill the noble saint's vision of feeding all who came to see his home. Moving on, solar heat energy can be focused by a massive array of solar reflectors going to concentrate the energy onto a central tower and this heat can be used for a variety of purposes including the generation of electricity. Here in this diagram we can see how solar energy can be concentrated in a tower or using a solar collector field to electricity. The heat passed on by the solar collector arrays or towers is used to heat massive storage tanks of water which become steam and passed down to turn turbines which power up generators that in turn generate electricity and this electricity is sent to the grid. The system is so beautifully designed that the water condensed from the used steam is reheated and sent back to the loop 
thus making it a continuous process. Apart from the conventional and extreme uses of solar heat, we can also utilize solar heat for a variety of other uses. The natural phenomenon known as greenhouse effect, where the sun's energy from infrared radiation is trapped inside the earth itself, is actually used in greenhouses to retain adequate heat for growing crops in horticulture. Combined with sensors and ventilation and micro irrigation systems, we can precisely control the climatic conditions for optimum growth of plant crops. Another interesting application of solar energy mimics the natural process of evaporation and condensation to produce distilled water in a solar still or a solar distillation unit. Impure water containing salts can be evaporated using solar energy into water vapor. This water vapor is then condensed and collected as clean distillate, leaving the salts and other impurities behind. In yet another application of solar heat energy, which is centuries old, solar heat energy is used for heating up a chimney, which then creates an updraft, sucking up all the heat from the building, thus making it cool, that is used in more modern times as ventilation systems in homes and industries to remove accumulated heat by exploiting the principles of heat energy transfer and convection of air currents. Now, we shall move on to the most popular exploitation of solar energy, the light energy. Modern science has taught us that the light from the sun has different forms of energies coming to us in a variety of wavelengths and when these fall on certain materials, an electric potential can be generated. This can then be magnified or multiplied to a level which is high enough to produce electricity in sufficient quantities. We call this the solar photovoltaic technology. Let us quickly understand how this works. Solar light energy is made to fall on specially arranged materials called semiconductors which have an n-type and p-type conducting band. When light falls as photons, an electrical field is created at the junction between the p and n-type materials which excites electrons resulting in their excited movement. This movement is translated into electrical energy which can then be stored or directly used. A single set of assembled materials is what is known as a solar photovoltaic cell and a whole set is known as solar photovoltaic module. Using solar photovoltaic technology, lots and lots of solar powered devices have been designed and are continuously evolving, ranging from solar street lamps, cell phone chargers, cars, solar pumps and lanterns to name just a few. Taking these several steps ahead, we can actually generate enough electricity to power up an entire home using a roof mounted photovoltaic module. And excess electricity can even be supplied to the grid for money or a cut in your own electricity bill. These can then be used as alternatives when there is a power cut or in remote villages which do not yet have electricity but have abundant sunlight. This is India's largest solar power plant installed in Charaka village in the state of Gujarat which generates 600 megawatts and is set up in a land which is on a 2000 hectare plot. Wow! In this picture, you can actually see India's first covered solar canal project which generates over 1 megawatt and this also reduces evaporation loss. While the world is going solar and into alternative fuel sources, India also has its Jawaharlal Nehru National Solar Mission which is a three-phased mission started in 2010 and expected to be completed by 2022. This mission is being implemented by India's Ministry of New and Renewable Energy. Here are some of the advantages and disadvantages of solar energy put up in a general fashion. However, the most important disadvantage remains the high installation cost, low efficiency of solar cells to harness solar energy and the large amount of land which is not exactly an abundant resource. However, we must also consider the significant advantages of solar energy that it is clean and continuous, noiseless, non-polluting. Keeping these advantages in mind, Research and development has accelerated into increasing the efficiency of solar devices and power generating technologies and material science, such as nano coatings of solar photovoltaic cells to amplify energy capture from the sun. So, that sums up our lecture on solar energy, which is actually a very short one considering the immense range of applications that were not discussed here, including space applications. But this should be enough to get you started. Do rewind 
and listen to this lecture more than once to grasp the important concepts and key points for using in your examinations. Thanks for listening and see you again for yet another lecture. Bye-bye.